Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hyper Flare, and in this video, I am going to be attempting the biggest sculpture of my entire life so far. So guys, I'm super excited. I hope you are too. There's going to be a whole bunch of challenges, I am assuming. So guys, let's dive right on into it. Alrighty guys, I hope you are enjoying your day so far. And if your day has come to an end, I hope you had an awesome one. So... We are here today with the biggest sculpture I have made so far. I had a whole bunch of fun making this one, man. And as I said in the intro, yes, there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of challenges. I have never made anything close to this big. Like if you guys go onto my uh, Instagram, you'll see that the general sizing is kind of around like the size of my hand, maybe even smaller. So like making something that's very close to life size, man, that was something. But I had a whole lot of fun doing it. So uh, if you guys are wondering where I got the inspiration for for this piece right here, I actually got it from a Men in Black International's alien. I'm going to be showing you guys a picture over here. This is what he looks like. So you'll see that um, I'll kind of go off screen, kind of, you know, go off and measure certain things and all that kind of stuff. And um, that's just me getting the proportions and all that stuff off this alien himself. I don't want him to look exactly like him, of course. And uh, you guys will see at the end of this, he actually looks completely different, but he's got characteristics of this alien. The first thing I really liked about this character was his nose, so I started doing that. Slowly start building that up. You, you'll see me I kind of like bounce back and forth between certain uh, regions on this sculpture. I really liked just like the fact that he's kind of stylized as well. So he, not only is he an alien, but he kind of has human aspects in the way of like, how he actually wears clothes and he kind of looks good like more like a casual looking alien like you know you probably sit down and have a beer with this guy you know what I mean so I kind of like that aspect and I wanted that aspect in this piece too and I'm not gonna lie I was kind of thinking about giving him a an earring but like I, I, I was like okay, I, don't, I don't know if this is taking it too far <laughs> I got no idea but uh I don't know I don't know maybe I'll do that in the future projects you know give, give my Aliens and creatures jewelry. I mean because you, you know you see people do it all the time. So I don't see why not right? I don't know, but I just didn't end up doing it in this piece What I'd like to do, in this piece at least, was just get little chunks of clay, as you will see me do right here. Start stacking it up, and as I smooth it out, it kind of has this very bumpy look to it. I really like this, eh? Like, it, the way that it turned out, it turned out way better than I thought. It just looked very fleshy, and it's kind of on the side of, I don't want to say my whole piece is hyper-realism, but like, it's very exaggerated, that's for sure. Another way that I started aging it is by throwing these little, I don't know what you call this, but the little, the little, the little flaps of like saggy skin on the side of the, of the, of the, of the face, it adds age to it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to add that too. I'm going to add that too. i got to say this right now, man. The amount of time I spent on the lips, it was kind of insane. I was like, what the heck? Just like the upper lip, the bottom lip. Just everything. I was like, holy. It, 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 it took so much time. <laughs> it took so much time, but honestly, very well worth it. And um, as you see here, I'm using the same tactics as I use for the bags. So again, just getting tiny bits of clay and throwing it on, smoothing it out, all that kind of stuff. It creates a very lumpy, fleshy kind of look. It, it's very... I wouldn't say, again, it's not straight up organic. Like, it's, it's very exaggerated. And I, I, I kind of like that style. I kind of like that style in this piece. Kind of have some bits exaggerated, some bits very smooth and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know, you, you got to create dynamic in your piece. Not not have a look 100% just uniform, just one thing. you got to have dynamic. And you'll see me doing the texturing later on. 
Um, I do that. Make sure you stick around for that, all right? Make sure you stick around, and um, yeah, you get all kinds of little tips. Now over here we are trying to figure out what we want to do with the head. I spent a lot of time thinking and contemplating what I do with the head. I started throwing these worms on. I didn't really like it. I thought, you know what, let's go with a more minimalistic, not too much detail, but not too minimal kind of style. Like I want something going on, but I don't want it to be like smack bang in your face. This is it. This is a full on crazy detailed area. I didn't want that. I wanted the main focus to be on the face. I wanted something to be there, I didn't want to be playing like what I said, but like, I just wanted, yeah, I don't know, I wanted a balance basically, right? I wanted a balance between like, some details, but nothing too crazy. So you, you can see me gouge out crevices in the head, and honestly I kind of like this, because there was some style in it, but it wasn't too much in your face. On the new adventure. Alrighty guys, now that I've gone through and done the blocking out phase, it is looking like this. I'm loving how it's looking so far. So right now we've got to go through and refine it. But with that being said, I'm not going to bore you guys with the refining phase. It's very repetitive. It takes too much time as well. So recording it is just, it's going to be a hassle. And then for you guys to watch it too, nah. Then after that, we're going to go through and do like details like texturing and stuff like that. I won't do too much texturing, but texturing will be a definite thing with this piece. So guys, I'll be seeing you guys in an instant. I mean, like, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but you guys will be seeing this instantly. So guys, I'll see you right now. I know, I know. Guys, that is a dead meme, I know. <laughs> and so anyway, we, we are going to move on from that. We are going to move on. Anyway, so this right here, I, I totally forgot about the ears. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot about the ears. I was like, dang man, I gotta do the ears. I don't usually do anything crazy with ears. I just kind of do something basic or I may go in and just do a little ear canal hole thing, right? But I thought, you know what, in this piece, I want to go and throw some very detailed ears. Do something different. I may as well, while this thing is freaking ginormous, you know, work on my ear skills, right? Ear making skills. And so I thought, okay, what do I want? I want something that's you can clearly identify as an ear, but I don't want it to be too streamlined, like the, the whole typical pointy ear like a like an elf looking ear so i thought okay well how about i kind of do that but i had more regions on it so i came up with this kind of triangle looking ear like this like a wonky wavy triangle and i start putting in lumps of clay little crevices around and then it's kind of hard to see on camera but like where the hole is that's kind of risen up kind of like bulging sort of thing and again, it just creates a dynamic in the ear. It makes it look unique and different. So, um, yeah, I see a lot of sculptures. They just do these pointy elf looking ears. And I just didn't want that. I didn't want that in my piece. I want it to look very different to what you usually see. I actually got inspiration by this guy over here. This design, I love the ear concept on it. I, I love the fact that it's kind of underneath on the sides of the head. I thought that was pretty sick. So I implemented that in this piece as well. So once we finally finished the ear, that took me so long by the way. Oh my goodness. 
I don't even know how long that took. <laughs> I think one ear took me like an hour or something. I don't know. So once we have done that, we finally went through and refined and then we started doing some wrinkle work. Yeah, so these wrinkles on the top of the head, I wasn't too much of a fan of. Um, I think it's just like, it doesn't make sense where it is and all that kind of stuff. But I will show you how you make it anyway. So basically what you do is you go in, you scribe out the lines and all that kind of stuff. So think of where the pressure is pushing up on and that's where wrinkles will form. You can even make faces and all that kind of stuff in the mirror, take photos and see where the wrinkles are. You yourself are your friend in this. So make sure you go in, take photos of yourself, pull weird faces and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't care if the neighbors potentially look over the fence and see you doing that, and they might think you're crazy, but you're gonna do some very good sculptures if you do this simple step. So now it's time for the skin texturing. I use this piece of plastic to kind of smooth out and kind of round off the texturing as I input it with the skewer. Otherwise it'll just be too sharp. Now I do do a mixture like what I said earlier. Did I just say, I just said do do. Oh my goodness. As I said earlier, you want to have variations in your texturing and depths and all that kind of stuff, right? So do a mixture of using this plastic and take it off and then scrub it with the same tool, okay? And you can see me use the sponges over here as well. And I do the exact same thing. I use the yellow sponge and that's more of a softer texture. Then I go through here and there softly, depending on the area, with the black sponge as well. So the black sponge is very hard and it gets more depth in the piece. So you wanna have variations, okay? You wanna have variations. And I do the same on the nose. So I have this scribe, I go through and imprint the pores that I want. And then I use a plastic film to go ahead and get more shallow, rounded, smooth pores. And so with the top of the head, you'll see me go through with the black sponge as well as the yellow sponge. Again, dynamics, but I want to emphasize with the black sponge so that the, the top of the head has a more harder texture when compared to the rest of the head. Alrighty guys, and now here is the final reveal. I am so dang happy with how this turned out. I don't know if you can really see on camera and stuff like that, but the texturing in this, I absolutely love it. Like I said, make sure you do dynamics, okay? Make sure that the pores are deep. Some of them are shallow. Some of them are more smooth. Some of them are more defined. All that kind of stuff. Make sure you have dynamics in each and every texture, okay? And then the ears. I was actually kind of surprised with how the ears turned out as well. I really like them. As I said, I never really do full on detailed ears and all that kind of stuff. I just do very, very easy ears. I spent so much time on this, but man, it was definitely worth the work. I'm super happy with this. Oh man. Oh my goodness. If I get enough support on this piece, I will go through, make a silicone mold for it, put out copies of it for you guys. So um, yeah, let me know. Let me know and I will consider it. I might even make a video of me making the mold if you guys want. But uh, whew, man, I'm super happy. I'm super happy. Alrighty guys. So that about brings this episode to an end. If you did like it, leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff. You guys already know the drill. It helps my stuff get out there. All that good stuff. Anyway, I hope to see you guys on the next one. See you later.